an amazing Sicilian. Sicilian defense. Taimanov played in uh, Morocco, North Africa. And uh, we're talking about the, Capablan uh, the Casablanca. <laughs> Casablanca 2024, round number three, rapid. We're going to look into Nakamura White and uh, Magnus with uh, the black pieces. Now, the format of this chess event, guys, um, involves a uh, preset opening, a famous game, and the players are required to continue to their own understanding, whatever they think it's best in order to win. So the first 15 moves have been already played and they need to continue beyond that point with their own game. So let's play this one because it's, uh, it's, it's very good, it's very instructive, and they did have 15 minutes each. So let's just continue with the, with the game here, e4, c5. So that's the Sicilian, we all know that. Knight f3, pretty much Sicilian open at this stage. e6, the variation would e6 being uh, continued d4 takes and knight takes and of course now you've got the e6 you got the knight f6 shoving again if you guys remember you got this one we got the Khan sicilian here or you just go with time on of knight c6 which indeed was the case in this preset position knight to c3 continues developing and d6 uh, G4, quite aggressive, quite aggressive. So in this uh, variation here, white wants to really frustrate the potential for a knight to F6 would be seriously, seriously um, uh, attacked by the G pawn, which has been now moved forwards. H6, H4, quite aggressive, more pressure on the king side for black. A6, A6 is that perennial thing that black plays in the Sicilians. You're gonna find this in the in a few variation. You're gonna find this in the uh, Dragodorf variation. You're gonna find this in the Nidorf. It's that multi-purpose idea with a6 to stopping any knight or bishop, and potentially at some point you may want to play some b5 as well. And if white would ever cast along, you may want to just push them one more time. So let's go with bishop g2. So that's the preset we're looking into. Bishop e7. And, uh, oh, you may wonder now, <clears throat> so Magnus took on d4. Now, you may wonder, um, wait a minute, but isn't the pawn on h4 now hanging? Because, uh, you know, it's just defended by the rook, right? So if you, if you inquire into this, I think it's good to know, guys, that if black launches to grabbing the pawn, it's a bit too greedy and that will be a disaster because follows the knight to c6 that, by the way, attacks the queen. So you would have to take this one back now here, right? And you capture, I mean, they take you, you take back. But the problem, the big problem in this variation would be that queen takes on d6. Queen d6, which threatens the c6. So you virtually do not have good moves here. You can't attack nothing on the king side for white, mind you, because the white queen very nicely uh, stops any attempts for you to attack the bishop. You just can't do nothing uh, in regards with this. Whatever you try to play here, uh, some 97 or something, you're always running into this kind of things. And I mean, it just amounts more and more problems. Uh, if you throw into this the castle long for white, and I think you're in trouble as soon as you're uh, rook coming here. And, and I mean, it's just very bad. So you can't really take the pawn on h4 at this stage here. So you better take on d4. Queen takes, you notice the queen attacks on g7. And now you shut off the queen. Even if the bishop were to take, still you're required to push the e5. All right, so queen takes and e5 now. And I just you attack the queen with tempo, but also you sort of open up the bishop's diagonal, looking at the g4. So for this reason, queen drops back on d1. And now you noticed we got a clock on the screen. That means now Magnus and Hikaru are going to be producing their own ideas. So bishop to e6, what could, be, what could be more natural than developing your stuff here? Okay, knight to uh, d5. Again, it's not going to work. I mean, just wanted to make it clear that the move like bishop e7 takes on h4, it's a disaster. Again, you just simply cannot. I mean, just look at bishop to b6 attacking queen. I don't have good moves here for black. I just explain now for all of our friends that might be wondering what on earth might happen if I do take that pawn. You can't really take it. You move it on d7, just consider knight c7, uh, rook takes. I mean, it's just, uh, 
you 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 start losing a big time so you cannot touch on h4 here so rook to c8 by the way knight on d5 wants to play on uh, b6 and further frustrate your rook and taking uh, a6 a c8 it's a little bit frustrating here and it's uncomfortable therefore rook c8 must be played immediately um, you might be able to take here but they will be taking back definitely you gave up a beautiful attacking bishop here for a troublesome knight indeed but you also concede and give away a lot of space so rook to c8 being cho uh, chosen here and by the way it's the right stuff to do it c3 because c3 blocks this rook's attempts to target c2 in the future it's always good to not allow the rook growing so immense power so just block it with a nice pawn move c3 over there knight f6 developing i mean what's not to like about this one it's important to understand the best players on the planet, they never ignore developing of their pieces, which is absolutely paramount. You have to develop your pieces quickly, as quickly as possible. So now he, uh, 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 Nakamura took on e7. Now you can take both king and queen, okay? But Magnus opted for king captures on e7. That means he practically castled. <laughs> In terms that your rooks are connected, your king is in the middle of the board, providing defense for this guy here, nice and safe for the time being, as long as safety is a concept in chess. <clears throat> it is. And rooks are connected, everything is great here. So what are the counter game here for white then just to go with the G pawn? Because that's why it's been played. G4 and the H4, that's exactly what purpose they serve. Try to opening up where the black king is more vulnerable, pushing G5 now. And... Magnus goes for the beautiful knight to g4. And now if you wonder, wait a minute, but can't I just play f3? No, you can't play f3 because if you do f3, this guy is hanging. So before you actually think about playing f3, you could do, for instance, something like bishop c1, which he did do, which he did do. Therefore, f3 is indeed playable here. Magnus took on g5, and this is the moment. Move number 17. Move number 17. With the, uh, like, 10 minutes on the clock almost you can actually see on the screen here uh, nakamura was required to play f3 which by the way we've just explained previously and i'm pretty sure he actually thought about this one this is the move he's supposed to play f3 and actually let me just show you so f3 plays and as you can see you can't go here can't move here can't move here because you're going to lose the knight you are supposed to go back h6 is just painful so we're going to consider this and bishop to g5 the game is perfectly perfectly fine perfectly balanced here uh it's just great it's just great for black and for white it's just it's just beautiful balanced nice no problem but nakamura didn't play f3 which probably uh not probably certainly is the best move here he played bishop to f3 attacking the knight and twice by the way by the bishop and by the queen you only defend it once counting the attackers and defenders that's for our beginners friends if they will be watching this video guys remember counting the attackers or and defenders it's the most fundamental thing queen to d7 defending now and uh knight now further attacks knight to h2 attacks the bishop of course the g5 pawn will be captured um now uh, recommended this bishop to e2 so that you don't give power to this bishop to this knight to trade off your your light square bishop but he actually took on g5 with check here and it's not the great stuff because f6 naturally blocks the attack from the bishop sending them away so they gotta go away and now magnus simply uh, moves over slides over the rook from the c file to the g file what is the a little bit of a weakness here so now gets the rook very nicely together powerfully on the g and h takes and queen takes here king uh, queen goes to b5 and you may wonder why is that is because simply you go for the weaknesses and b2 is a weakness to which uh, uh white very well could reply just b3 that's that's a possibility or nakamura drop the bishop back but that's already a little bit frustrating i have to tell you something just look at the psychology of the things here queen to b5 attacks the b2 pawn right fair enough clear and now he drops a bishop from a very much ideal position in which you were cutting through the e3 a7 diagonal as well 
uh, interrupting the communication between the rook and the potential to coming into the game somehow. And this rook now, it's just uh, being deemed very isolated. So this is one of those things in chess. If you forced like a, a middle to end of the game to having a passive isolated rook, this is a little bit uncomfortable just to put it mildly here. I mean, I'm pretty sure Nakamura hated already being itself in this position. So bishop c1 just to defend the pawn, wow. All right, so now uh, bishop to f7, you may wonder why is that? Well, we've got just simply two attackers on the h5 white pawn. Now rook goes back where they actually were. And now, of course, uh, the commentators and the uh, softwares, the uh, heartless machines would tell you that actually G5 is phenomenal here. And if you say, yeah, but they just keep attacking me here, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because this guy is going to be taken. So that would have been probably the best way for black. Not probably, certainly. Apologies. Again, I have to remind you this. But Magnus goes as a, 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 a powerful human. He goes just with the queen a4 at this stage here. Probably trying some, some, some queen intrusion over to the second rank amongst many other things. Also keeping an eye on the e4 white pawn. So limiting the white queen uh, um, approaches. Now again, defensively played queen e2 because, I mean, it's a problem if you allow the black queen to getting so close to you. It's a problem here. D5, aiming to open up more stuff, takes and takes. And the beautiful bishop on D5, look at how it targets the rook in the corner that defends uh, this pawn as well here. So the queen is overworked. Queen has to look after the C2. Queen has to look after this pawn here. Uh, if presumably the white rook will be moving away from the H file. Painful. Uh, it's very defensive being played by um, white here. Queen to C6. More power, battery, whoop, that's just something because the bishop ought to make it on f3, guys. Also, the h5 pawn is going to be disappearing with tremendous attacking power from black here. It's an attempt. So f4 now because, frankly, Nakamura is just having big problem at this stage. Big, big problem for Nakamura. Also, notice the time now. One minute, practically, he plays bullet. I know he plays bullet, and uh, he's actually thriving in the speed, but when the position is bad, it, just no amount of time now is going to be uh, saving the position. So, queen goes away from the bishop attack, goes on e3, tries to keep itself on the e file, but alas, it's just not going to work. Now, rook gets on h5, Rook takes, bishop takes, uh, pawn takes, trying to opening up the e file. Notice how isolated. Look at the rook on a1. Look at the bishop on c1. I mean, those pieces, it's like they've never been moved. Okay, so I, I just wanted to make it as clear as possible for all of our friends. Um, what is about the pieces activity? This is one of those very clear examples in regards to the pieces activity. When your stuff hasn't been deployed yet, or it looks like it hasn't been deployed yet, and whatever, even if the bishop had been played previously or not, the ultimate situation is that now it looks like they've never been touched, and that's just, just worse. It's, it's horrible. Rook goes on to E. Why, you may wonder? Because that's where the queen is, and that's where the white king is. Queen goes away, uh, moves away from the devastating E file here, and also targeting the uh, B, the G7 uh, square, pawn and square. King moves very simply, very naturally. The Y pawn is being absolutely pinned. Can't make a damn thing here. And even if they push it, it's just, it just doesn't mean it's a disaster. Uh, they can't push it because Rook would have taken with check just the end of it. It's already towards the end. But anyway, Bishop e3, played by Nakamura here. Uh, again, it's a, just a desperate attempt to try and getting things uh, uh, somehow developed, but awful. A rook took on uh, e5, pinning the bishop to the king, obviously. The well, bishop can't move now. And the king is in the most unfortunate uh, square ever. They haven't been castled. So another lesson, castle your king, guys. <laughs> castle the king, okay. Uh, king goes... Unfortunately, again, more exposure for the white uh, king. Not that they have too many options, though. Queen just checks directly, aggressively, 
and it's just a disaster here. It's 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 just the checkmate coming in 10-9 moves. And um now it's just a simple tactic, impossible not to be spotted by the probably the best chess player on the planet. Uh Rook captures on E3, and it's just at this stage now it's just pretty much game over. And if queen were to take, you probably notice, guys, there is a queen moving over to d1, and that's just checkmate, the end of the game. So that was the rapid play, the Casablanca, Morocco, beautiful. Morocco never been there, but you never know. Uh, and um, with a preset uh, opening, and uh, the players are required to continue. So that happened yesterday, guys. Now is the 19th of May. I aim to upload this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, fellas, and I'll see you on my live streams. And around 7.15, I think, or 7.30, GMT, uh, I want to cover the uh, round number four uh, today. By the way, Kasparov and Karpov, the old rivals, also will be play, uh, playing this evening. So I'll try to uh, uh, cover those beautiful, beautiful uh, matches today. Thanks for watching this one. Hope, guys, that's useful. Everything that I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm saying here, and um, I'll see you soon. Anything.